it's a good time to commit a crime because I've once again sanded all my fingerprints off. Episode 8, we're going to do some testing in this episode, and I don't know how much work we're going to get done on the actual guitar, but we're going to definitely get some testing done here. How can we make a curve in the back of this thing and do it successfully? So the other thing we're going to work on in this episode is get that bead roller out. Um, actually, I finally got it out of the box, but I haven't put it together. Here we go on bending the back. I'm going to show you my jig that I made for bending the back, and we'll see how this works. I, I have my doubts, but I'm hopeful. Here's what my crazy jig looks like, and I'll show you how all this goes together and how it works. We have this Easter egg in the middle, that's what my wife calls it, so we're calling it the Easter egg. But it's got a very nice curve on it that's consistent all the way across both sides, all the way down. And that's the subtle curve that I want to press into the back. I don't want any of these edges to press sharply into the metal, so these are over curved. Um, so it sits in there like that, and the press will go on top of it. And then this bottom piece has a, a lip um, routed in it, and you can see how the top will sit on here. This lip that I've routed on here is just slightly deeper than I want the, the curve of the back to be. Okay, the way this little jig goes together is we start with this bottom piece, which has the holes in it for the bolt holes. We put the metal piece on there. The foam goes on top of that. And really the only reason I'm, I have the foam, and maybe the foam isn't needed, or maybe it's a bad idea, I don't know yet. But this foam, I'm hoping, will just protect the metal from getting any sharp creases in it. The top piece goes back on and, and it gets bolted down. We'll place this in here. We'll slide this whole thing in the press and we'll hit it with we'll hit the press with it right there. I'm not gonna actually use a back that's cut out like this. I'm gonna cut a square off of this sheet right here. And then I'll put all that sandwich back together and then I'll press. That's the plan. Let's see how this goes. Okay, I've got my metal square with the holes uh, in it, which line up with the holes on this form. So I'm just going to put it on here and bolt the top one in there. Okay, the steel's bolted down in there tightly. The foam is in there. I got the Easter egg in the right spot and I got the press thing on the top. I guess all that's left to do now is press this thing and see what, I, what we get. Okay, that didn't work at all. In fact, that panel was every bit as flat as it was when I started it. So now what I've done is I've put the Easter egg thing inside the whole sandwich, smashed the thing together with just the bolts and clamps instead of trying to press the Easter egg into the back. I have the Easter egg inside this one, so that means I'm over bending it quite a lot because it's under a lot of tension. In fact, my form is even cracking. I mean, not that this was going to be a permanent form anyway, but it's cracking, so you know it's under a lot of tension. And you can see the metal is even, you know, wrinkling in there, like it's shrinking and stretching and stuff. So I'm going to take it out of here now, and let's just see what we got. Well, it's very nicely curved. It's very smooth except for right there, there's a little divot, and then there's a huge divot back here. I have no idea if I can work those out or not. If I can work those out, and the rest of this stays this good, then I'm going to call that a win. That thing's really well dished. Okay, let me see if I can work that out of it. Okay, so how can I demonstrate the dish? If you look here, you can see I've got a dish. Obviously, the, it's going down right now. I've got the dish pointed down. And you can see it's definitely dished. It's really, really strong. Smashing the Easter egg into the sheet metal while trying to hold the side flat is 
Not really. I mean, it might have worked a little better if I hadn't used, you know, if I had like real, some really thick metal forms. I mean, look what it did. This form obviously broke. Anyway, maybe some big 3 8 metal. Maybe those things made out of 3 8 two pieces of 3 8 metal without the flat part in the middle, just the two outside edges, might do the job pretty well. Here's where I'm at on the back. It's it's a lot like an acoustic guitar. It's dished very well in that regard. So it's dished this way quite a bit and it does have some dish this direction as well. Honestly, that's really good. That that's a very nice dish. That's a very nice curve. I it's smooth. Been using these and what a world of difference these make over all the hokey stuff I was using before. I got to tell you I am nowhere near as afraid of damaging my sheet metal as I once was. This isn't perfect yet, but holy cow, it's really close. And I, I feel like with a little bit more work, I can make that perfect using those. So I need to pick up a set of these. These are my friend Bob's, who you're going to meet here in a minute because I'm going over to Bob's shop to do something. So this is a great back, and it's probably good enough for this build. But before I make it part of this build, I want to try again. So here we go. Over to Bob's. Okay, here we are, Bob's. We're cutting half-inch plate with a plasma cutter that's only rated for three eighths is that right three yeah, eighths? That's, right. <laughs> that's just how we do it around here Half-inch steel. We did it with a with a. Oh, what do we do it with a plasma cutter that was only rated for three eighths? Look at that. That's not bad. That's not bad. Got some cleanup work to do, but these are going to make nice little molds for bending some stuff and doing some cool jigs. How long did that take us? <laughs> Longer than it should have. <laughs> that took a while. Yeah. That took what an hour or two, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Bob is not your average human. Bob makes things like this thing. How how you're bending quarter inch plate with this in 90 Very degrees? Easy, yeah. Easily bends quarter inch plate with this homemade break. Unbelievable how I wish I could give you a sense of scale on the video, but I just can't. This thing's incredible. He's swag only got swag off road. We should put those. Oh three yeah, swag, swag off road. road yeah. He's only got one jack in there right now, but he could easily put three in there and do up to sixty tons on this thing. This thing is an incredible piece of hardware. He sent me a picture of it a while ago, and I didn't get a sense of scale. And now that I see this thing in person, I can't stop looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just flipping unbelievable. Bob Shop. He, he likes to work. He's an artist and a genius. And this is what artists and genius areas look like. <laughs> Good things come from chaos. That's right. That's right. Yeah. How are you going to argue with that? Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable, Bob. Well, this is what we made at Bob's. Half inch thick plate. And it's smaller. It's about an inch and a quarter smaller than the outside of the guitar. So we made that thing. And the concept is the Easter egg is going to sit in here. And I'm going to have another sheet of steel that clamps the sheet metal in between. Way tighter and way better than that particle board one was. So this thing's got a lot of work and a lot of cleanup to do. Okay, let's uh, let's grind on this thing for a little while.
Okay, that actually worked. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, maybe you can see a little bit like that. The shape is perfect. It's literally perfect. Okay, it's not perfect. It's really, really good. Okay, let's cut out the back. All right, it's getting pretty late. I'm calling that a wrap for tonight. I'm really excited about the way that that thing is shaped. Oil can situation is great, really, really strong. I guess I could make it go a little bit in the middle right there, but it's still pretty strong. I think once the sides are bent over and it's soldered in, it's there's not gonna be any movement in it whatsoever. So a little bit of cleanup work to do and a couple little spots. And I think that one's going on this guitar. All right, I'm pretty happy on how making the backs is coming along. There's probably a better way to do what I'm doing. I don't know what that is yet. It's probably an English wheel. English wheel to me looks like it has a steep learning curve and I don't have one. I'm gonna press on with pressing. The one thing I'm gonna do different is I'm gonna make a different Easter egg. <laughs> and I'm probably gonna make it out of maple or something much, much stronger than this particle board because um, I could imagine this thing will crack eventually if I keep trying to use it. And I want to give it a little bit more curve and tweak the shape just a little bit. I feel like my concept is working out okay, so I want to improve just the, the little piece that goes, that presses into the back. So now I have two backs. What I've got to figure out is which one of these backs am I going to sacrifice to the bead roller? I really want to test bead roll in one of these. And I don't know which one I want to bead roll yet. This is the bead roll that I want to put in it. It's just a slight offset, so this is a, it's called a tipping die. I have these bead rollers, which are your, you know, normal little, it just rolls a, a bump in it. So it's got the tall and the low, and then you just roll it in between and you get that. I don't necessarily like how small this one is. I'd like to have one of these style um, bead rolls in the back of, of these eventually. But this one to me is too small and it looks kind of tacky. It needs to be quite a bit bigger, half inch, three quarter, maybe even an inch. So I need to get a few of those to test them out. But what I did with this one, this is the tipping die. It takes a flat surface and it drops the surface on one side of the tipping die, the other side stays high, which I, I, I really like it actually. It looks very, very cool. I think it'd be really neat to have that all the way around the edge of, the, of one of these backs. I don't know which one I'm going to sacrifice to the tipping die yet because I'm worried that it's just going to screw it up. I'm leaning towards doing this one, the one that I did the press stuff on, because ultimately I would like to press these and then I would like to see how they react to the bead rolling. Either one of these backs is of good enough quality to go into this build. This one's a bit more extreme of a curve. I, I, I think I'm kind of liking a bit more curve than the bit less, but this one's much, much stronger. Like. It's really, really strong. This one's not as strong. I think it's gonna be really strong when we, when I bend over the tabs and, and I solder it in, I think it's gonna be incredibly strong. But this one's already incredibly strong without it being bent over and soldered in. So there you go, that's the choice I gotta make next. So um, I'm gonna carefully draw my line that I wanna bead roll and then we're just gonna go for it. Dang it. What if it ruins it? I guess we just got to get over that. Might ruin a back right now, but at least we got another one. Here we go. Let's bead roll this thing. Okay, that inside line is what I'm about to bead roll. I can't believe I'm about to bead roll it because this back is so good and it could just easily go right into the guitar and be beautiful. But that wouldn't be forward progress, so let's just see what happens. I mean, we need to know, we gotta know. Let's speed roll.
that was awesome. I like it. I like the. I like it a lot. It definitely has some new shape to it. Uh, it's really good all the way around. It's pretty solid until you get right here. I've got a. I've got something going on there. So I got to figure out how to fix that. It might be even just right there. It's too low or something. It feels like it. Yeah, it might be right there. It's from here to here that things are a little weird. I might bead roll the other one too. I went from terrified to bead roll to let's bead roll everything. This has definitely escalated quickly. Let's bead roll top number two. I want to show you this one straight off the bead roller without any kind of cleanup or sanding or anything. You can see now I've got that same, it's interesting, this same corner over here from right there to right there is wonky. And actually this one's even worse because it's got this corner over here is also raised and then it's really low right there. Uh, definitely going to be a lot of work to it. What's crazy is look how much curve it took out of it. I mean this thing was extreme curved. In fact, it's one of the reasons I picked the other one to hopefully go into it because I didn't want as much curve as this one had. But boy, most of that curve is gone. It's it's actually the wrong way right here now. Gonna have a lot of work to do to this to get that curve back in it and get it all flat again. And honestly, <laughs> what's really crazy about this is after all the work to do the press and make the the metal thing to bend the sides and do all that. I've almost got an identical result. I pretty much, you guys saw me press this one in the wood thing and it didn't work that well. And then I mostly just hand bent it. Um, I've been watching this guy's YouTube channel, Make It Custom, Custom with a K. I just watching him make fenders and different things. It's crazy how much just work he puts into it by hand. You know, he, he lays these things on the tables and he bends them over his knee and he just, I mean, he just goes to town making these curves and stuff. And so, that's kind of what I did with this one to get that big curve into it that was curved both directions. I just did a lot of hand bending with it instead of any kind of pressing or anything like that. And that's how I had that nice really curved result. Now I've taken all that curve out of it with this bead roll. So I've got to get it flat again and see if I can work some curve back into it. And honestly, these tops are going to darn near match. So did we learn anything through all of this? I don't know. I mean, I've got some experience, but I don't know that I understand what I've learned. Hammer and dolly work has been super productive. A little bit of bending, tweaking, and boy, this thing, it looks sharp. How do we feel about that? I feel pretty good about that. This is probably the one that's going to go into the guitar. It's got a nice dish this way. It's got a nice dish that way. If you guys only knew how much effort that took me to get it to there, but I'm learning. I'm getting things figured out. I'm getting a little better. Sheet metal work is no joke. You guys that are awesome sheet metal workers, man, I can seriously appreciate the amount of skill and work and effort it took to become really good at working sheet metal. It's a super hard process, especially when you don't know nothing like me. 
Okay, I am insufferably proud of that. The sides are bent over now. It's ready to go into the guitar. It's got a bunch of sanding done on it. Um, I kept telling my wife, I showed her, I said, did you look at it? No, look at it. Like, did you look? No, really, look at it. Look how good, look at it. And I kept, look at it. <laughs> poor, poor thing. Super proud of that. That's legit. That's gonna look great in the guitar. Okay, what's next? Okay, let's wrap that here. That was an unbelievable amount of work. Doesn't show on the video how much work that was, but that was an unbelievable amount of work. Thanks for watching.